Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Waynesboro Area School District uh, meeting of the Board of Directors for 0222. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll start today with a pledge. allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I believe we have everybody here tonight, so we're good with the roll call. And do we have, we have no changes to the agenda. Does anybody have a motion to approve the agenda? Move to approve. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, minutes from our last meeting. Do we have a motion to approve those? Move to approve. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, any questions or anything about those minutes? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Abstain. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Strait. Uh, any opposed? Okay, thank you. Now for the superintendent report, Dr. Klein. All right, a couple of things. As I mentioned the last time, I probably wouldn't continue to report on the number of cases for COVID because we are down, we have two total cases in the district. Numbers are way down, um, and we have two students uh, at Uberville with the virus. So uh, I want to make sure you knew that. I probably won't report it from here on out, Mr. Dean. The other thing is, is uh, Ms. McDonald, I don't know if you want to share the, the goodies and the sign up here for the, the board. I want Mrs. McDonald, I need you to come to the mic. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so our special education classrooms at the um, middle school, high school, and Maori, they um, came together and like in a week and a half came up with tons of baked goods for us to sell. So um, Dr. Royer had suggested that we could have a table there and Jackie at the chamber. She was very nice. She even made baked goods for us. So I just got the total. Um, we have made a profit of $537. So we're gonna let the kids at the house. Um, I'm gonna split that up by whoever participated and then the kids will have a lesson on once and what do you need so they can budget and decide what they think we need for the house. I know they're looking forward to being in the yard in the spring. So they're looking at some games and different activities like that. And some of our bocce players want a bocce set. <laughs> so, very excited. So we had a little bit of leftovers and we thought that it would be um, nice since it was board appreciation for you to have a treat. So you can see the ones labeled with um, Mrs. Richardson's class made it. And then the other one is from Mrs. Malott's class. And then just our brochure about the house. And I'd love to, if anybody wants a tour of the house, I'd love to give you a tour of the house. Um, and then in the uh, spring, we plan on having you guys over for just like a little um, party so the kids can practice planning a party because that's a real life activity. Thank okay. you very much. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay, we have uh, two people who would like to speak tonight at, for public comment. Uh, Ms. Pence, you are first. Good evening. I'm Sarah Pence. I live at 14728 Hunnadel Road here in Waynesboro. And I just wanted to take a second um, and speak on um, the vaccination notification letters that have been going out. And um, I just, the newest letter that I have a copy of here, I wanted to read a paragraph from in a minute. It was dated 2-3 um, of 22. Um, the wording is misleading to parents, I feel, and I was just asking if, you know, you all would reconsider changing the wording a little bit um, and consider adding in 
an exemption form from the state of Pennsylvania. I have a copy I can leave for you. Could be attached with not even a notice to the parents, like let them figure it out themselves. Or even on that letter, maybe put in the website where the parents can go for themselves to download the link for the exemption um, so that parents are aware that there are other exemptions other than a medical exemption. Working in pediatrics for seven years, um, those of you who don't know, um, I'm a nurse practitioner, seven years here in Waynesboro, I'm now over in Hagerstown and practicing family medicine now and seeing lots of children. And the consensus is most parents don't realize that there are other forms of exemptions available to them for their kids for vaccines other than medical. And so again, without you know, talking medical or trying to change anyone's opinions, it's a parent's right in my belief to choose what's best for your child and what's not, especially after COVID, that was a hot topic of, do you vaccinate, do you not? So for just the standard vaccines, um, I just think it would be appropriate for parents to know that there is an exemption form through the state of Pennsylvania that they can easily fill out. Most doctor's forms don't have a copy of this. And so then you don't even have to explain it. You know, they could find it out for themselves and fill it out. Um, so the current wording um, for this child will be turning 11 and before she goes into middle school or um, I think it's seventh grade here in the form, they need, yeah, the seventh grade vaccination, they need this child needs at least one vaccine. So the part in the letter that I feel is a little misconceiving to parents says, proper vaccination must be completed between now and the start of the school year. If proper vaccination is not documented, not completed and turned into the school nurse's office, your child will risk exclusion. If for medical, reasons this cannot be completed between now and the start of the school year, a medical certificate must be provided. Um, sorry, I'm skipping lines here, showing that an appointment has been scheduled. Medical certificates must be turned in to the school's office no later than the first day of school. Now it is the time to prepare for these requirements. So and then there's a statement about financial assistance and obtaining the vaccines, contact the state health department of Franklin County. Um, and then they give the, you give the phone number and they can take, help take care of that for parents. So it just feels like to me, I don't know what exclusion means. And it just feels like parents maybe don't have another option. So I'm not asking you to give them the options, but if you would consider when those letters go out, attaching a copy of this form, they could find out on their own, they could ask at their healthcare provider's office, or they can do the research themselves, even if you'd want to just attach a link that they could go online to provide you with that link at another time too. I just have the copy, but I would be happy to email you the link where that could be found, it on, found excuse me, on the state website. Do you have an extra copy of that? Yeah, this is for you guys. Okay, that'd be keep. great. So thank you guys very much. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next person who would like to speak tonight is Ms. Schaefer. <laughs> Yesterday was my birthday, so being called Miss is really nice. <laughs> go I miss. won't tell you Mrs. how old I am, I miss, but, but I'm, I'm not sure. counting anymore. No, I don't go into that stuff. Uh, okay, my husband, some of you know him, is a man of very, very few words. <laughs> <laughs> and that's because he can't get a word in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's why he married me. Yeah. <laughs> 50 years ago, um, he was so upset. Our son is, our grandson, grandson's been home sick a lot. He got that mucus thing that's going around a lot. He has a little fluid in the bottom of his lungs, we're concerned, but he jumps around like a monkey and we hope he can go to school tomorrow. But he had off two and a half days last week 
and then Friday, half a day. And then yesterday is what my, my husband's upset about is that was President's Day. And he was very, very upset that that was, couldn't have been chosen as another day. That wasn't such an important day. And he just wanted me to tell you that. And I, I mean, I was upset too, because you know us oldies, but goodies and how important that President's Day is to us. Learn about the cherry tree being chopped down and all that. So I don't even know if they're teaching that in the curriculum. I would love for somebody to share whatever the elementary curriculum is or let me know where it is so I can make sure that they're learning <laughs> all about those things that are so important to our patriotism. The second thing is I'm here to back up Sarah. And I know I've presented this before. This is uh, Representative Russ Diamond's House Bill 261. I think I have emailed it to you all, but I'll email it again, along with our latest Protect Pennsylvania Children's. Um, we, we've done this at our two last lobby meetings, PCIC, Pennsylvania Coalition, formed for consent. And we are not against vaccines, we are pro-choice. So um, on that House Bill 261, simply, and I can say it in four words, school vaccination exemption announcements. That's all that it's about. It's just to announce that they do exist. It is in the Pennsylvania Constitution. I did not bring my copy of my Constitution with me today, but I'll email this all to you. And I have to get all the new members email because I don't have you guys yet, but I'll look you up online. And thank you so much. And again, thank goodness we're as far along as we are. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's the only request we have for public comment tonight. So we will move on to board reports. Anybody wanna go first? I can. Okay. I can go first. Okay, we met this week. Uh, that would be policy committee. And we worked on a lot of financial stuff and record keeping stuff. And it was grueling. But we got through it and let's see there's something else where's wendy what's the other thing oh i know what it is next time march we're going to be doing trauma yeah the whole time we're going to be doing trauma which is required by state now yeah i forget anything uh, and they're all four on for first reading yeah they're all all, all four on for first reading Thank you. You're welcome. Well, we had budget and facilities back to back yesterday. Mrs. Yes. Zimmerman. And budget, um, actually we had good informational session from Mr. Holtzman. Um, however, it's really too early in, there are too many unknowns right now to make any presentations. Correct? Correct. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Okay, and facilities, we're looking at lots of uh, different ways to utilize our ESSER money to the uh, best of our ability. Um, several things, some of the things we would like to do, even if we give the go ahead because of the, the wait, uh, new projects might not, not even get going until like late fall or winter, did you say? Yeah, yeah possibly like, fall bids for maybe. work in the spring next year. Yeah, winter. so, but we do have some that are, are we're getting bids on and, and should be happening soon. So um, facilities always has a lot, you know, things that need to be done in their district, either maintenance uh, or occasionally, though most often it's maintenance, it seems like um, some new things we're gonna have to work. Um, anybody else have a board report? Okay, all right, if not, student rep, twice in one month, it's Riley. <laughs> Okay. Ooh, that's loud. <laughs> okay. So as many of you may know, our boys basketball team was co-champions. So they are co-champions with Shippensburg because we are their only loss and they are ours. So that led us to our district playoffs, which are currently going on as we speak. So we're hoping that they can win and go and go as far as they can. Also, over the past weekend, we had our business expo at the high school for the first time since the pandemic, as with the Almost Beneficial, 
we had um, 50 vendors over at the high school. So that was really successful for the first time since COVID. FBLA did have a table at this and we got some donations. So that's gonna help go to our states that are in April, which FBLA is really working hard to study for. So we can move to nationals that are in Chicago in the summer. Our gymnastics team, participated in states over this past weekend and they placed fifth along with our sectionals for wrestling were held at Southwestern and Bodhi and Kaden got second place. And we also wanna give a congratulations to Jaden for third and Colby fifth and Titus for sixth. Also Junior Sovetan made Valentine's for the special education students for Valentine's day. So that was something special that they had to celebrate. And then that's all I have. About the play, yeah. you want to talk about the, oh, play? the play? Oh, I went to see that on Friday. It was so good. <laughs> they worked really hard, and I'm sad that Noah got sick and couldn't participate. Yeah. But um, Kalissa, who played, I forget what she played, but she did Literally. a great. Yeah, she did a great. Cassidy did a great job. All of the leads did a great job, and I know they worked hard and they loved performing for us. And we heard that the. Uh, the young lady that had to step in for yeah, that's Calissa. Franklin Hart. Yes. Oh, okay. Calissa. Oh, I thought it was. Uh, oh, okay. I got the names wrong. Yeah, Cal um, Cassie was Dorley. Right. And then oh, okay. Calissa I Miller. Yeah, she stepped in for Mr. Hart. Oh, okay, and I she got the wrong person yeah. that stepped in. Yeah, okay. she was. She did good. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. So yeah, we I really enjoyed it. Um, it was we had, courageous on her That part. was yes. Holy yeah. cow! Yeah. Well, that, did a nice job. Well, mm -hmm. did she do the song? Like he had a song that yeah. was like a solo. I have no idea. I went Friday night when okay. Noah wasn't sick. Did she do that? Did she yeah. do it? Yeah. No, we didn't. She had five yeah. minutes to prepare. I know that for Saturday night show. So well, anyway, better I heard, her than I heard me. that she did great. Yeah. <laughs> so that that's the fact um, that she knew that whole big part. That's yeah. Amazing. Yes, yeah. and they're doing Matilda, hoping to do Matilda for next year for a kids show. So. Gotta get, gotta get a couple more guys. Yeah, recruit a couple <laughs> guys. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, uh, on to our presentation tonight. Mrs. McGuire talking about first choice. Thank you. Hello, I am here um, presenting just kind of some progress updates on first choice and just kind of giving everybody a background on where we've been and where we hope to be in the near future. So new board members, this will kind of be more of a first introduction and those of you that have been board members have more of a sense of what's been going on, but hopefully this will catch everybody up just on highlights of our progress right now. So I think this is McGuire. I have to log into <laughs> presentation. Oh, it's okay. Sorry. It's all good. I can get started anyway. Okay. So um, I can just kind of back up a little bit. About four years ago, Dr. Klein um, had highlighted a couple of high school teachers and high school employees to really start exploring the idea of changing our education system and changing how we do things. That team went to several conferences and, and visited other school districts and started gathering some ideas about how we could prepare our kids differently coming from, from this very rural community to be ready to compete in the wider, wider world. So from there, that group of teachers kind of got to a point where they were like, we've maxed out what we can do without the next layer coming in. So at that point, Dr. Klein kicked it over to an administrative team. Um, those teachers joined that our, our administrative team and collectively we started trying to make a vision statement and really starting to build what the system could be. We as an administrative team said, Dr. Klein, he says he gave us the ball. We say he threw the ball at us. Um, you know, it's semantics, but it's fine. Uh, <laughs> but we then, along with that teacher team, really started trying to create a vision statement and trying to work forward. We, we started with a very, very, very wordy mission statement, which I can't even remember at this point because I think it literally had about 60 words in it because everybody felt very strongly about different parts. We have now whittled it down. And when Mr. Erickson get this, gets this pulled up, you'll see it is now down to about 10 words <laughs> that in WASD, we ensure learners are prepared for future opportunities. So we know that we can't predict the future and we can't possibly give them everything that they need, but we wanna make sure that when kids leave our school district, they're ready for whatever presents itself to them that they're interested in pursuing further. So we wanna make sure we're giving them diversity of experiences 
And we really are highlighting those three pillars of, of first choice that Dr. Klein brought to us initially, which are academics, career, and whole child. So with that idea, <laughs> Nick caught up. <laughs> we currently have five teams that are operating within our first choice development team that now also involve teachers on those committees and starting to do the work collectively um, and really trying to push this vision forward. So it's kind of morphing as we go and we know that there's, we're never gonna get to the end of first choice. We're never going to have first choice. It's always that moving target and it's the idea that we're always evolving to get our kids ready for the world that keeps changing. So our five teams that are operating right now are the academics team led by Dr. McCallum, the career team led by Mr. Weatherald, the whole child team led by Aaron Taylor, the innovative learning team, which is the combination of what was trail and the Anytime Anywhere Learning for those of you who've been here for a while. So Dr. Goodine and I are married now. Um, and the communication team, which is obviously working with the stakeholders and trying to get information out there. So we're kind of give you a highlight of what each team is doing right now and where we're headed. So Nick, if you want to advance. The academics team, this is what you would probably traditionally refer to as curriculum, but we're not calling this the curriculum team because we want it to be so much more than that. We don't want to just have a static curriculum. We want to be presenting kids with material that's interesting and innovative and let them have choice and voice in what they're doing. So right now we are, that team is working on curating the, the curriculum that exists right now. So right now it looks like a curriculum team, um, but the vision is, advance Nick, <laughs> to really be moving towards this continuum of, of learning that can happen and kids can be moving through that more at their own pace. So we wanna lay out what it is that we feel strongly all kids have to have before they leave and then kind of the layers of things that would be nice for them to have or, or paths that they can explore. And we're already actually a, a much further distance down that path than I think we realize with a lot of what we're offering. Our course catalog at Washes is an impressive beast. So, you know, we already have a lot of options there. It's kind of more helping to build that continuum from K to 12. So hopefully we will eventually not only finish revising that curriculum, but tying it into the MTSS process and really making sure that all of those student safety nets are in there as well. Okay, the next team is the career team led by Mr. Weatherald. And this is the team that is working on creating awareness, exploration and experiences as we move from elementary to middle to high. So right now our high school does a great job of career readiness. They have a ton of things going on, internships, co-ops, placements all over the place but we're really working on trying to bring that down even to the elementary level. Obviously the elementary kids aren't going to go out to the businesses. So we're starting with the idea of John Holland's career personalities. If you've ever taken a personality survey or career survey, like any of those interest inventories, what job would be good for you? They're all based on John Holland's work. So I didn't know that Mr. Weatherall is teaching me all kinds of things, <laughs> but so we're really trying to expose those six personality types. And what's happening right now is that team is developing the career fair for elementary kids. So K to two will be housed in the elementaries. They're actually in tubs in Mr. Weatherall's office. <laughs> they will move from building to building. And there's, a, there's an activity for each grade level for each one of Holland's six career types or career personalities. Three to five is actually gonna go off site. Right now they're going to Otterbein Church because they have a big facility and are willing to share. So our three to five kids will go over there. And again, they're going to have all those, those experiences around those six personalities to really try and get a sense of like, which of these things do I like? Obviously we're not locking in a 10 year old, but we want them to have an awareness of, hey, I kind of like things with my hands or I kind of like those more imaginative, uh, like STEM kinds of things. So we're trying to get them some of that exposure, okay? Eventually we will have the essential skills aligned with those personality ideas and the career clusters and have this big, beautiful system that will work together to help try to funnel kids towards things that are maybe more purposeful um, without locking them into something. Cause we all know that you have no idea what you want to be when you're 18, sorry. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it changes a lot. And especially because the opportunities continue to change. So we want to make sure that we're not locking them into one of those things, but we're helping them to really gauge strengths and interests um, as they go along. Part of what we will be doing with that to be able to track that from K to 12 is building out within Abre a learner portfolio in the, th the Student 360 app. So we'll be able to see that kid grow all the way from kindergarten through 12th grade with artifacts and inventories and all kinds of things. The next team is the whole child team. 
This team is building and enhancing dispositions and habits for success. This is led by Mr. Taylor right now. We are kind of bringing Mrs. Eberhardt's family and learner success team in underneath this umbrella because we found that there's some redundancy in what they were doing. We would kind of bring them together so that they're stepping together instead of diverging right now. So, so far, this team has researched the 16 habits and done some presentations for staff. So the 16 habits of mind, um, those are things like collaboration, teamwork, um, persistence. I made myself a list of good ones to give you. <laughs> those are the big ones. So we're kind of tying those together with the teamology foundations of leadership and problem solving, helping others, trying to build kind of that continuum of those habits of mind that we want kids to have when they leave. Um, and then also this team is working on the school climate survey. So that's in conjunction with the IU. We've completed the survey itself. They're now diagnosing or digesting the data and starting to analyze so we can create action plans for each individual school, but also look for what's consistent themes that are running across the district. So that's the big work of this team right now. Ultimately, this is another place that we are looking to house something of a portfolio in Aubrey with that student 360 on what are those habits and dispositions that they have, where are they right now, where are some things that we could we could strengthen, and also aligning that into the MTSS process to be able to deliver some interventions for kids that need them. So this is going to be a big job, this is a big area that we're working, um, but their big project right now is definitely looking at that climate survey and looking at what are our kids telling us we need and what is our staff telling us we need and what are the parents telling us because all three of those stakeholders were surveyed. The next team is the innovative learning team, which like I said, is Dr. Goodine and I together, um, realizing that this is technology to advance and accelerate learning, not technology for the sake of technology. <laughs> so this team is really working on a lot of projects around instructional delivery strategies, as well as technology and other resources that can be used by the kids and by the staff in order to increase engagement for the kids, increase the personalization that can go for the kids, um, and really help to move all of this forward. The virtual program, our FCVIP, is living underneath this umbrella right now. Um, and obviously, we've already designed that program. Dr. Gunnan has done an amazing job. We're in year two of getting this program running. Um, and the teachers that are on that team have done a ton of work on testing out different technology. How does this work? How does that work? How do the kids feel about it? How do the adults feel about it? And doing all of those things to really refine some of those things that are good for virtual, but also some of those pieces that can come into the regular classroom as well. So we wanna look at what are the instructional strategies? What are the learning outcomes we're looking for? And then what tools best align to get our kids there faster and better, which might be technology and it might not be. This slide has a ton of things listed on it that are projects in the works because we just combined two teams. Um, so there's a lot of things going on. We wanna to look towards onboarding processes for staff and for new students and families as they come in, getting all of that streamlined together um, to help make sure that kids are getting what they need and we're tracking what's going on as our system is getting busier instead of the static streamlined standardized process. The Last team is the communication team. Dr. Sternerhein and Mr. Holtzman are actually in charge of that team. They're in charge of two-way communication with all of the different stakeholder groups. Right now, what they have completed is, is um, creating a first choice staff channel. So every Monday, there's a post that goes in there that goes out to all of the district staff. So that's teachers, paraeducators, cafeteria, custodians, everybody has access to it. Um, and so it's just information about how First Choice is moving in the district right now, things that they can do to get involved. I think one of the most recent posts was about the, um, the classroom monitor position, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which everyone is cheering about right now because it <laughs> helps with our substitute situation. <laughs> They're also working on a logo redesign. Um, as we're continuing to kind of morph what this looks like in the district, we wanna make sure we're creating a logo that is accurately representing that. So that when everybody, whether it's board members, community members, teachers, parents, kids, everybody can kind of start latching onto that visual of truly those three domains being the big part, that academic career and whole child. So that's what this team is working on right now. Ne coming next on that team is hopefully to launch a first choice family channel where we'll start highlighting some of those things for parents and families to be able to access as well. Our elementary buildings, the families are already in Abre. 
secondary, we're headed there at the, at the beginning of next year. So that'll be kind of more important when we get to next year. Um, finally, just kind of looking at, there's four big pieces that are coming together. We started with the first choice development team and the teacher leaders that are, have joined those teams and are helping to move projects forward. We've got a lot of teachers working on curriculum and things in the background. Um, from that, we're, we've created aspirations and visions for those individual teams. And like I said, taking that really wordy, genuinely it was about 60 words down <laughs> to about 10 um, to make it more succinct and meaningful. And then we're trying to identify processes that need to be in place to make sure that these pieces of first choice that we're building just become part of how we do things and not a project that lives on the side. So it becomes just the Waynesboro way. So all of that together is gonna help us move forward and make first choice just a reality in the district, again, it'll never be done. It's not somewhere we're going to get. We won't ever be able to check the box and say, there you go, we're here. But we know where we're headed and we wanna to continue to make sure that our kids are truly prepared for whatever comes next. Um, the last slide that's on there is just kind of a potential timeline. The board members, you guys can look at that whenever <laughs> you want. These are some of the processes that are here and some of the things we're working on and when we're hoping to get them there. Our tentative goal right now is that by the end of next school year, we have truly embedded all three of those domains in lesson planning and unit planning and day-to-day -day instructional practice in our district. So we have a long way to go to get there, and that's an ambitious timeline, <laughs> but it's not going to be fully integrated, but we're hoping that it's really moving that direction by then. So that's all the information that I have to share with you. Anybody have any questions, comments? Uh, yeah. I was just going to say that, I, you know, I'm, I'm so happy we can actually get back to what we tried to do, started to do two years ago. Mm -hmm. Well, started before then, but just got rolling. Then we just got sidetracked for a year and a half, <laughs> two years. So it's nice to get back into the swing and look yeah. forward to getting this to make it happen. Absolutely. So, and, and there's I, some really exciting things that have gone on in terms of, you know, I think the biggest hurdle initially is kind of starting that mindset, mindset shift right. of we can do things differently. Right. Um, and like any anything is a good idea to try once, <laughs> you know, like yeah. just try something mm -hmm. and then kind of give feedback on that and see how it's going. So it is exciting to see it happening. And there's lots of different little pilot projects going on in all of the buildings right now around this that are kind of flying under the radar as we start getting bugs worked out. Once we get those things figured out, we'll start bringing more of them to you. <laughs> okay. Great. Thanks for your partner too, uh, Mrs. Welcome. Lamar. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. On to uh, the business part of the agenda. First item is the WAEA WASD contract. Who's right. going to do that, Dr. Klein? Okay. Uh, as administrative team, we rec recommend, as, as you know, there are a couple of board members, one the negotiating team with the administration, and we are recommending that the, that the board approve the uh, collective bargaining agreement with WAEA. Do we have a motion? Move to approve. Second. Discussion, questions, anything from anyone? Everybody feels confident they know what they're voting on. Okay. All right. If there's no questions, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Klein. I just want to thank WAEA and our teachers everyone that's been involved uh, for their patience. You know, we've worked for a year and, uh, you know, there, it, there, there were tough times, certainly, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we appreciate that we're able to uh, find some medium, medium ground there. So thank, I want to thank WAEA for your part of it and <laughs> hope this be uh, a good thing forward for the future. Thank you. Okay. Uh, on to the next item, personnel. Thank you, Mrs. Harold. I'd just like to direct your attention to the personnel items listed in the board docs. We have resignation of support staff, resignation of coaching staff, appointment of administrative staff, uh, recognizing uh, and congratulating Eric McDonald for being named director of special education, uh, appointments of support staff, uh, continuation of appointment of a early, uh, additional staff for early bird program, game personnel, also within the board docs, we have resignation of a long-term substitute staff member, appointment of support staff. And finally, we have a series of medical leaves um, on the document that 
recommendation is approved as listed. Motion? Please go approve. Second. Any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. On to uh, the resolution for fair funding. That's probably you, Dr. Klein, yeah, as well. As you uh, may recall, uh, Ms. Uh, Susan Spickle was in here, did a presentation a couple weeks ago, uh, actually about a month ago, and uh, showed the gaps between the funding of some districts and another, and where Waynesboro falls, and how un unfair the funding is for Waynesboro compared to other school districts in the state. And there is a resolution, uh, you know, there's a trial going on right now, but uh, 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 districts throughout the state are signing off on this resolution in support of a fair funding act or a fair funding movement uh, in the state. So districts that do have that large gap like Wainsboro, uh, hopefully someday will be a lot fairer to the So that's what this is for. And I, you know, I see this, and uh, Dr. Royer was saying there's 400 and however many out of the 500 who have, that have signed on to this. You know, we try to make everything so political. This isn't a political issue. This is, uh, you know, all these school boards, no matter what party the peoples are who are, are prized to them, we all recognize the, the unfair, my opinion, unfair system of how we're funded. Um, so that's what we're going to be voting on to just be included in that group who are trying to get some changes made, more fair changes. Uh, so do we have a motion to approve this? I move to approve. Yeah, I'll get it. Okay. <laughs> well, take, we'll take your pick there. We'll <laughs> Ms. Scooser. All right, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Thank you. All right, Lincoln Benefit Trust, Mr. Holtzman. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Annually, we ask the board to approve the medical insurance rates for the following year. This would be for the 22-23 school year. Um, the Lincoln Benefit Trust is who we have our insurance through. They're recommending a 7% increase for next year. Um, technically, it doesn't actually cover our full cost, so to speak, for next year, but we do have a bit of a reserve that we've been drawing down gradually. Uh, if you remember, as part of that switch over to the LBT, we had transferred money from our medical reserve into our account, LBT. So we've been drawing that down gradually over a period of time. So while the 7% is certainly an increase, it would be higher without that reserve mm. that we're drawing down. Um, we're really only required to keep two months worth and we probably have uh, significantly more than that, probably getting closer to six months worth worth still in there. So even though we've been drawing it down, we've been drawing it down very gently. So we're asking for approval of uh, the rate increases for next year. Motion. Move to approve. Second. Thank you. Questions for Mr. Holtzman? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, bus drivers, Mr. Holtzman. Thank you. For your consideration, we have one district driver. Um, and just as a reminder, the way the process works is they submit a request to be a driver for the district. And we run their uh, driver's uh, history through a uh, kind of a background check that meets our insurance criteria for driver. As long as we meet that criteria, we go ahead and submit them. So we have a lot of people, I guess they're van drivers, a lot not of bus drivers. It would be, yeah, these are, for the district, they're typically going to be a van driver, or any district would be a van realistic. Okay. So this could be for coaches, it could be paraprofessionals, right. teachers. Um, we have a lot of employees who do uh, transport students. Or okay. We have a motion. Move to approve. Second. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Uh, next item is a uh, change in title from temporary to permanent. Is that Dr. Klein or, okay. Yeah. I apologize to be part of the personnel, but um, it, it, Mason Weatherall has been at uh, Fairview Avenue this year as assistant principal. He's been acting in, as the uh, associate principal there. Uh, and that associate was to give uh, Ms. McGuire more time to pursue first choice, which she's done a great job with. And um, we, we believe it is working and making a difference. And um, I'd like to make, recommend that uh, she be permanent. In that. So we're keeping the two, the two principal concepts. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, 
you know, she may be going a, a lot more, right. but right. Uh, he's left holding the ship, so okay. or sailing the ship. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's he's done a great job, and we're very happy with him. Okay, motion. Please approve. Second. Any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? So, yes. can, we, can we make sure that his name gets added? Yeah. The, yeah, it's in the agenda. It's nowhere on there. Okay. It just says the position. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next item is the first reading of four policies. Dr. Klein, is that you? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, again, as Mr. Sullivan said, they, they were tedious, but the policy committee did a great job with these. Uh, there are three uh, fiscal um, policies there, as you can say, see the federal fiscal compliance, purchases subject to bid uh, quotations, and purchases uh, budgeted uh, and uh, purchases. And then finally, uh, an 800 record retention period. And that, that's very important for us to have those because we keep records if we don't have a time. It's usually years that you have to keep them. So some might be three, some six, whatever it might be. So uh, we need those, particularly in the business office, what to do, plus, you know, other So we're asking that those be approved. Okay, do we have a motion? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so I assume then that the second reading will be the next meeting. So if anybody has any yeah. questions in the well, meantime. No, it has to be 30 days. There, it has 30 to be 30 days. days so okay. A so, month from now. Okay. So if you read right. them over and have questions, call Mrs. Sullivan. She'll be <laughs> Please. All I your really questions. enjoy this stuff. I was going to say these. More questions about it. These very exciting policies yeah. that we're doing. Yeah. Well, I will tell you, I do appreciate the board having this process in place because the, one of the best things you can do for this district is to have up-to-date policy and continually uh, revisit them. Uh, it, it's a good practice for a school district, so I do appreciate that you guys take the time. Well, and I appreciate that um, the admin, when they're needed for specific policies, have all yes, come yeah. through and been there you know, to answer questions and to help us and to figure things out. They they are always supportive of what we're doing. And so I, I love that I, yeah. we have that process in yep. place too. All right, next item, check and connect attendance program. I can take that one. Uh, the check and connect is a, a contract for the elementary program of check and connect. And I believe it's through the county, right? Correct. Yeah, uh, it's already in existence in on the secondary level. This would provide two um, elementary check and connect mentors for up to seventy students. So this is new. Yeah. This is. It's not. It's new for, for elementary. For more elementary, I believe Fairview and Maori have check and connect, so we'll be expanding it to the other elementary schools. Yeah, for how many? Twenty. So this would provide seventy, a total of ninety then total. Um, this would be, this is one of the programs that um, the evidence-based uh, ESSER opportunities that um, fortunately as a district, we had already invested time and energy in this um, type of programming, but we're going to go ahead and expand it with the understanding that with COVID, we've also had more pronounced issues with school attendance. Okay, so the agreement is providing people to check on attendance is that what we're doing i'm yeah, confused so, about this too so the, there's essentially um there you would we have two designated individuals that would serve as our check and connect personnel that will work with up to 70 students Got it. in okay. the school building connecting with parents um and it talks about them continuing the, the work over the course of the summer as well, because in some cases, some of these students are also going to be in summer school. So uh, really trying to reestablish the importance of, um, you know, having daily attendance and just another layer of support for students who have struggled with truancy issues. But they're not actually social workers. 
um, in terms of they, they may be a social worker, okay. but the, their primary responsibility is to try to work with the students and the families in order to improve attendance. Okay. So did you say Maori was doing it and Fairview was doing it? Maori and Fairview have had Check and Connect, um, and then the middle school has it, and then I think it only extends to ninth grade at the mm -hmm. high school. Um, so we're expanding it to the two other elementary schools with the understanding that teamwork makes the dream work and we will share slots as necessary. So, Because I read that, and I don't actually get it. Yeah, Mrs. Harold, maybe yeah. the next academic, I mean, the middle school program has been around for probably at least five or six years, maybe. I didn't even know it was at elementary. Maybe it, we could put it on the agenda for next academic committee and just have them explain to us what. I, mean, I, I feel like I feel like we can explain now because I don't want to go to academic committee. <laughs> 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 um, I, I didn't. I mean, I, I think it's just one of those things that we probably need to have a greater awareness of. I mean, so you want to table it for now? No. Oh, you want to go ahead and pass no, it? No, I think and it's great. But I, think that, I feel okay. like if somebody asked me about it, I would be embarrassed that I didn't know it was at elementary. Got it. So just to, to let us know, you know, I mean, I'm sure it's working. I know Ms. Taylor is a, highly endorses it at the middle school, and you're all nodding your heads. So I'm assuming. <laughs> I don't okay. have my glasses on, but I can see your heads. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just to be more aware of it. And I guess my other question is, are we fully funding this, or is this a partnership where they're paying some? Again, I would have to defer to Mr. Taylor because he had uh, worked through this. It was my understanding that there was, um, it looks like year one, what we're paying, and then year two. So it appears as if we are we are fully funded. Okay. With ESSER funding. Okay. No, I think it's a great program, Ms. Harold. I don't want to do that. I just want to know more about it. Okay. So, Cindy, you'll have to come, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> or I can fill you in. So, okay, so if everybody, everybody else okay with go ahead and vote on this today? Yeah, yes, I mean, table. Okay. I'm not against it. I just don't understand right. it. And, and my understanding well. from the three administrators is it's working very well. Yeah, so that's good enough for me. So, okay. Yeah. But okay. I do want to know more about it. All right. How about a motion from someone? Move to approve. Second. Okay. No other questions at this point before the next academic committee meeting? <laughs> okay. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Chromebook, please. Mr. Erickson. Yes, uh, for your approval this evening um, is a Chromebook lease um, to uh, for our new uh, kindergartners and also a replacement for our um, incoming ninth graders, our current eighth graders. Uh, this is a four year lease, um, annual payments of uh, 51289 uh, with a dollar buyout at the end of that lease. Um, I did present this at the budget committee um, and the budget committee did approve that. Um, so I'm asking for the board's approval um, of this lease pending final approval uh, from our solicitor. Okay, motion. Move to approve. Second. Uh, the, the, uh, yes, yeah, our solicitor has looked at this. He had a couple of questions. Uh, it just checking into those a minute ago back to have that final two. That's kind of where we're at. Uh, wait, so you're so saying to hold if, off on no, no, if you approve it, it'll, it'll be approved pending the, the solicitor contingent on yeah. them. Agree, he didn't him agreeing. Okay, okay, just wanted a couple of things clear. Okay, I'll move to approve. Okay, second. Okay, uh, questions, anyone? Mrs. Harold, yes. Um, just to just kind of just to clarify, Nick, maybe you too that that we're working toward getting all the lease agreements in place so that we'll have all the equipment prior to the start of school. Because I know sometimes in the past, Nick, you've ordered before July one. Yeah, then that's why I'm ordering them so early, just so we can ensure that we have them for the start of the next school year. Okay, thank you. Okay, we've had a motion and a second. Kind of suggest you know, the elementary uh, school want to give a kind of an outline, a rough outline of what kindergarten is doing with these. I'm I'm having trouble hearing you, Dr. Klein. Oh, I'm sorry, Nick. I, I was asking the uh, elementary principals if there's if they can give a little bit of an outline of how these are being used in kindergarten. I just want to make sure people don't think that we put the kids on these computers all day long and that's it. 
Okay. Could could you go up to the uh, okay? We're Thank here. you, Dr. Goodine. So with kindergarten, just with all of our other all the students at elementary, they're using it for exact path. So that can be reading, language arts, or math. They're also using it for programs that are online programs like Epic that give them access to um, books that can be read to them. They can read them at home with their parents when they do take the devices home. Right now, a lot of what is happening in all of our buildings is just trying to build capacity in the kindergarten students. That So should we have a fit day? We're hoping not. Um, <laughs> should we have a fit day that they're ready to go into Google Drive, they're ready to access Google Classroom, get in Google Slides and do all the things that they would need to do, log on to Google Meets, know how to operate a lot of those different functions. Um, knowing a five-year-old, and I have a kindergartner this year, so just the simple fact of logging in takes a lot of practice with these kids. Um, so, you know, the goal is always to have the kids on, you know, a couple times throughout the week. Um, and it can vary through, you know, the different activities when they're doing guided reading and just getting them on, you know, when they're independent and a lot of different things. So there's a lot of direct teaching right now, but there's a lot of times where we're trying to get the kids on and letting them kind of play around with it on their own too. Well, and I would say one of the big things is our kindergartners right now do not have touch screen devices. Correct. This is a, to purchase touch screen devices because if we can finally get them again, that's why they weren't purchased last yeah. time. And that's going to be a game changer because you've never watched a five-year-old try to navigate a, a trackpad. trackpad. <laughs> it's awful. Yeah. It's awful. Like me. And then trying to get him to use a mouse, you don't realize how big a mouse is to a five-year-old's yeah. little hand. Yeah. So then, you know, so we actually have a bunch of travel mice, um, which is what they're using. But so they're definitely not on the device all day long, but they are using them very purposefully. And different teachers use them a little more than others. Um, and because we are also blessed to have Keith McRae, our elementary tech specialist in the district at this point, he's doing a lot of things to help teachers find ways to purposefully use both the Chromebook and the iPads that our kindergarten classrooms have. Because Kate, Kate and one have iPads, um, like a couple in their classrooms as well. So he's really helping them find ways to navigate that. Um, and he is a huge proponent of and supports and drives everything through the idea that it's not technology for technology's sake. It's technology to enhance and accelerate learning. So if what you're trying to do is better with me sitting here talking to you, then we do it that way. But if I can do it better, faster, or more engaging through the technology, then we do that. So he's doing a really good job of driving things that way instead of just like, finish it, finish it there. <laughs> so we have, I would encourage any of you who ever want to see it, we have kindergartners that are coding indie robots. I say coding. They're coding robots to follow a path. They had six tiles the other day and they had to find a way to get it through. So five-year-olds are coding um, all the way up through our fifth graders who are coding the um, Spiros and Ozbox right now. So it's really impressive to see them and their devices are part of that. And, and the teachers, yep. yeah, and all the teachers are connecting those tools to the curriculum that's happening. Um, I was in kindergarten the other week and they were using any robots and they were tying it to the math lesson. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of really good stuff happening. Um, and they are alternating and they're becoming, I don't, Nick, I don't know what the technical term is when you're switching between <laughs> devices, but they're learning a lot of different devices and how to use them and use the skills. They're device agnostic. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, your kindergartners are device agnostic. <laughs> sure, I like that. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I would like to comment, not this school year, but the previous school year, when we did have to have some home, I don't know, there might have been a week or so, and I had to go in. My granddaughter was in second grade. She was seven, and I had to go in one or two days to be the monitor, and I was stunned at how well she was working on her Chromebook. The teacher was doing the instruction and talking to her, and Naomi was just, I mean, I, you know, I, it took me a lot longer to get used to computers back in the day when they started. And I was amazed at how well she was doing with it and how easily the teacher was communicating with her. If you can come to the podium, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a motion? Yeah, no. Okay, all right. Sorry about it.
Okay. Uh, if there's no other questions or comments, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Next item is the lease with Docio. That's that's me again, Mrs. Okay. Harold. Yep. Um, as we typically do, um, uh, we usually do a five-year uh, lease for our uh, multifunction printers or copiers in the district. Uh, we are asking for your approval um, on this lease with Dossio um, with a base lease payment of uh, $4,980 a month. Um, and that does include 6 million uh, black and white uh, copies and 360,000 uh, color uh, copies a year. Um, they're giving us an overage of black and white at 0 0.0025 and color at uh, 0 0.023. Um, if we do not reach that 6 million impression uh, limit or that 360,000, uh, they are actually going to credit us back um, any copies that we don't use. And just for some information, we have seen um, just over the last two years, we've seen a decrease of about 3 million a year. Uh, two years ago, we were using about 12 million black and white impressions a year. Uh, last year, uh, we, the year before that, we used about 9 million. And the, just last year, we used 6 million. So um, we're hoping that we can stick around there. Um, and this is a five-year um, lease ending June 30th, 2027. Um, Nick, just um, what I recollect from budget committee, is this is substantially cheaper than what we have now, correct? Yes, uh, right now we're, um, our lease is right around, I believe, um, I don't have my notepad with me, it's actually out in my car. I think we were paying right around $7,900 a month. Um, and that was for 10 million impressions. Um, so it's considerable savings um, in, within each year at this and, point. And my understanding also is that this company comes highly recommended. Yes, comes highly recommended by several school districts, um, not only within our IU, um, but also outside our IU as well. Um, myself and uh, Mr. Holtzman were a little concerned about the, the um, very low price, uh, but we immediately reached out to school districts uh, that we knew, and uh, the, the recommendations were, were immaculate. Thank you. Okay. Do we have a motion? I move to approve. Second. But take Ms. Fortney on that one. Let's go. Okay. Uh, any other questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much. Right. Well, I'm going to make an announcement that uh, the uh, basketball team is losing, but it's 43 39, so still pretty close. And we understand it's a great game. How much so. time? Well, which, yeah. End of the third. Oh, okay. Oh, we got four. Okay. I'm getting updates. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> we can do the next one. They're probably sitting next to each other. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Sorry. Okay. Next item on to business. Uh, Mr. Holtzman. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. For uh, your uh, action, we have board bills table as well as requisitions. That's for the general fund. Uh, the board bills payable as well as the cafeteria than the normal requisitions and then we also have some assessment change information we received from the county uh, in this case here there really was no change but we want to have some additional okay. motion move to approve second second questions for mr holt not all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed okay. all right on to clayton cabinet comments anyone I made mine just now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Um, I have one, Mrs. Harold. I just yes. wanted to let um, the public and the board know um, that I, I am having a procedure done tomorrow. So I'm not probably going to get the board meeting edited until Friday. So it won't be posted within the typical 48 hours. Okay. All right. Thank you. And hope everything goes well. Uh, next. Thank you. Okay. Uh, board member comments. Oh, we have another. I, mean, okay. um, I just want to recognize that we, we have prepared for the possibility of a fit day, and so I want to thank all the um, the admin um, as well as the teachers who provided the input. We're hoping for the very best that you know, we are essentially been approved for five fit days, and 
uh, for the next snow day. That is definitely the possibility. Uh, we finally received official uh, PSSA scores from PDE this past week. Um, so they will be um, sent home with our runners grades four through nine on Friday. And um, right now, I believe at the next board meeting, we will be looking at the operational calendar for the 2022-23 school year, um, getting feedback from the buildings. Um, I know Dr. Klein has also shared it with parent groups as well with admin. Um, so hopefully we'll have a um, operational calendar for review at the March um, Anyone on the board? Any board comments for today? Okay, if not, uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. Okay, we will be going to executive session. Uh, afterwards, we'll not be coming back. Uh, all those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you everyone for attending.